everyone wants to increase reliance on nuclear power for its energy consumption, and critics are furious. For more than 20 years, the island has struggled to find a permanent dumping ground for its nuclear waste. Until today, some of it is still temporarily stored near poor communities in return for money and development. Now, nuclear power plants produce clean energy, but also radioactive waste. If not safely managed, it can harm people and the environment for thousands of years. I'm Chan Tao Cho. In this edition of 101 East, we look at energy usage in Taiwan and ask, what is the human cost of electricity here? In the past, we could catch a lot of fish. Not too much now. The yam we grew used to be so beautiful. We don't get yam like that anymore. It also doesn't taste as good since the nuclear waste storage was built. We have had more health problems, more people dying from cancer. Sixty kilometers off Taiwan's south coast, Orchid Island has been a storage site for nearly 100,000 barrels of the nation's low-level nuclear waste since the 1980s. New shipments stopped in 1996 after years of protests by islanders against health risks posed by the radioactive waste. It includes contaminated clothing, tools and cleaning agents. Much of the waste came from Taiwan's three nuclear power plants. They supply 20% of its energy needs. This storage site comes under the care of the state-run Taiwan Power Company, or Tai Power. It is currently treating and repacking rusted older barrels of waste, which has caused much concern due to possible radioactive leakage. Here, safety is a top priority. The cement walls containing the barrels are 35 centimeters thick. That's just the first level of protection. If rainwater gathers in the facility, the drainage system collects and contains it so it doesn't leak into the environment. Staff moving in and out of risky areas are checked to ensure they stay within safe levels of exposure. Despite these precautions, it's hard to convince many locals that the damage isn't already done. Deep suspicion remains among those old enough to remember the government's claims in the 1970s leading up to the construction of the site. When they first started building it, government officials told us they were building a fish cannery to help fishermen here. It was a big lie. We found out what it was too late. It was only when missionaries brought Taiwanese news reports to the island that the truth was revealed. Against this backdrop of distrust, the story of Taiwan's nuclear controversy unfolds. Orchid Island is home to about 4,000 indigenous Taiwanese of the Tao tribe. They have close linguistic and ethnic ties to the Austronesian peoples of the Philippines. There are fewer than half a million aborigines in Taiwan today. They lived here long before the Han Chinese arrived in the 17th century. Orchid Island was a restricted area for ethnological research until 1967. Many people here still maintain their traditional lifestyle. Our traditional homes are built partly underground to protect against typhoons. Xiamen Jiakneng is a community leader who also works as a nature tour guide. To him, the root of the nuclear issue is one of clashing civilizations.
Why must it be dumped here? Orchid Island doesn't benefit from nuclear power. It's like throwing Taiwan's rubbish in our backyard. To us, that's disrespectful. There has been more cases of cancer. News reports say cancer and radiation are related. So that affects our emotional well-being. We've been seeing deformed fish and changes to the flora and fauna. We can't say for sure if it has to do with the nuclear waste. But you do wonder why these things only happen in recent times and not in the past. In the past, perhaps there wasn't enough communication with locals about our comprehensive safety measures. It's better now. The younger ones understand. We create a lot of employment here, so many have changed their attitudes towards us. Besides jobs, the government provides numerous benefits to islanders in return for storing Taiwan's nuclear waste here. Among them, medical subsidies, scholarships and various public amenities. The majority of Aborigines here live in poverty. In recent years, they received two cash handouts of more than six million US dollars each time. Thai power records reveal that since 1982, it has dished out nearly 40 million dollars worth of compensation in cash and kind. One of the most popular benefits, free electricity. Today, the talk among many villagers is not just about how much radiation, but how much benefit they're getting in return. For me, it might be inconvenient if they remove the waste because we'd probably have to pay for electricity. Many elders want it to go, but some people think since the nuclear waste is already here, the damage is done. Just be resigned and benefit from it. The government has promised to start shipping out the nuclear waste by 2016 once it finds a permanent disposal site. Even if the waste is taken away, the government still needs to take care of locals. The radiation will remain, maybe for hundreds of years before it can resume to normal levels of the natural environment. The fact that we get compensation means it's not a good thing, but the government will never admit it. There can never be enough compensation. What about our lives? What are our lives worth? We don't need the site. We can depend on our yam, or we can fish. We won't starve. Yam is very filling. But for many among the younger generation, perhaps yam and fish are not enough. This is the annual dinner for the Thai power staff working at the storage site, many of them indigenous islanders. San Man Lan's job is to monitor radiation levels at the work site. He used to actively campaign against the government's nuclear plans. After attending a course on nuclear radiation, he became an outspoken supporter People keep saying it's the mother of all evils. But because of my job, I'm very clear about the background radiation levels on this island. I love my village, my family, and I'm very meticulous at my job to make sure that there's no unhealthy radioactivity. People can fall ill or get cancer due to many reasons. It could be our bad dietary habits these days or that we eat more processed food. There's so much misunderstanding because of ignorant gossip. People just parrot what they hear. I'm very upset when villagers tell me off. They call me a traitor. They call me Thai power's slave. But I take my work seriously. I put in more effort for this land than the people who just talk about it. Many villagers are only interested in the manner of compensation. They want cash, not development. 
But what can they do after using it up? So we have people who wait for the compensation to come just to get drunk for a month. The focus should really be on programs to benefit future generations. I say let's leave the nuclear waste here and have a win-win situation. We get what we need from the government and they do what they need to do. Siapen Manak Nong is a proud tribal elder in one of the six Aboriginal communities here. Now 65 years old, he knows times are changing. Sharing his views on this matter, he insisted it was an occasion worthy of shaking the dust off his old warrior's uniform. We used to be very much anti-nuclear. Over time, the anger has eased among many people because there's compensation. Our younger generation likes it that way. If the government ships it away in 2016, we probably lose the benefits. It's a big dilemma. So it's important we keep our customs, build our canoes, catch flying fish, worship God. Growing yam is a very important tradition too. That's because it's practical, it's filling, rice is different, it's scattered, yam unites. In Xiapan Manak Nong's world, perhaps the biggest price paid for Taiwan's nuclear policy is a community divided over money. Seeking a permanent solution for storing its nuclear waste, Taiwan tried negotiating with North Korea, China and the Solomon Islands to send it overseas, but without success. Now plans are on course to find a permanent resting place in a remote seaside village in southeast Taiwan. Once again, an Aboriginal community faces the prospect of accepting this toxic duty. After the break, we visit the Taiwan tribe in Nantian village and also look at Taiwan's long-term energy plans beyond nuclear power. Nantian village in the southeast of Taiwan is home to a small community of the Paiwan tribe. Locals use the Nantian stones found here to make artifacts unique to the area. Community leader Gu Liu Liu is a keen collector. This is a special totem for us. That's a hundred pace snake painted on the stone. We believe we're descendants of this snake. It's the most poisonous you can find in Taiwan. It's called a hundred pace snake because its toxin is so deadly, a bite will kill a man before he can complete a hundred steps. Today, Nantian village is bracing itself for another type of poison, radioactive nuclear waste. The government eyes the area as a potential location to store low-level nuclear waste from Orchid Island permanently. The carrot, money and development for the local community, which has fewer than 400 people. A referendum to decide on whether or not to store waste here is expected in the near future. Already, many residents see it as a welcome ticket out of poverty. My occupation? You can put it down as jobless bum of the Republic of China. We're poor. If the nuclear waste storage is here, we'll have job opportunities, right? I don't care about radiation, I care about the compensation. With money, I can send my kids away to go to school. Leave me behind as a guinea pig for this experiment. I don't care if I die, I'm old. <laughs> but it's no laughing matter to Gu Liu Liu, who showed us where the proposed site is likely to be, at this hillside a stone's throw away. He says the community is still locked in discussions with Thai power on the matter of compensation. 
一些会持。The compensation is very tempting. Officials mentioned 180 million U.S. dollars in benefits. Actually, that's not enough. The land area here is 40 hectares. Even 300 million is not enough. The question is, how will the money be used? Especially for directly affected people like us. How much cash will go to the people? The forefathers of the Paiwan tribe once boasted nobles and warriors. Today, outside the ancestral hut where their spirits are believed to dwell, tribal leader Vuvu Paulus prays for their blessings to keep her people united. The compensation is like a big cake, a temptation. I hope we remember this land is our life. We have so many resources, the land, the sea. Why do we need to destroy our home? Here in the capital city of Taipei, where the bright lights are, the debate on nuclear safety continues. The cost of uh, nuclear is uh, almost uh, uh, one third of uh, the average electricity generation cost. Uh, so it's the most economical and the cheaper uh, way to generate electricity. Also, they use uh, emit uh, almost uh, zero CO2. But nuclear energy comes from mining for nuclear fuel. From mining to enrichment, the processes cause so much carbon emission. In Orchid Island, many of the storage barrels for the low-level waste have eroded. They're stored by the sea. When there's radioactive leakage, you're finished. The barrels that deteriorated are those used in the early years. We have done proper checks and are upgrading the barrels. During this time, we've continued to conduct strict tests to the environment. There have been no signs of radioactive pollution. They're lying to people who don't know better. There are a few types of radiation. Do they know what they're measuring? They may be measuring, say, gamma ray, but there are other radioactive particles that can only be measured in a controlled environment. All of them can cause cancer. In the past decade, uh, Taiwan's nuclear safety is improved quite uh, dramatically. And in the same time, our uh, nuclear waste generation is uh, reduced about more than 90%. But with the current administration planning to step up reliance on nuclear power for clean energy, that statistic is likely to change after Taiwan's fourth nuclear power plant kicks off by the end of next year. Its location, Gongliao Township, in the north of the island. Gongliao is known for its annual Hohaian Rock Festival, held every summer. Beneath the feet of the hundreds of thousands of people who flock here each year, the beach has been steadily eroding. No thanks to the construction of Taiwan's fourth nuclear power plant nearby. They built the jetty there positioned in such a way it disturbed the natural migration pattern of the sand throughout the year. So the sand has been flowing away every year, but doesn't return. We've lost so much of the beach, its natural beauty is gone. To Yang Guiying, this beach is a reminder of a lost battle. Before the first Hohaian Rock Festival, Gongliao was in the spotlight for its anti-nuclear protests when construction of the power plant began in 1997. Yang Guiying spent many long days and nights fighting it without success. The stop-start construction of the power plant has taken more than 10 years, delayed by political wrangling. More than 90% of the people here voted no to the nuclear plant, but they went ahead. There was nothing we could do. Anti-nuclear activists say Taiwan's position near the junction of two tectonic plates is a disaster waiting to happen. In January this year, research by the National Taiwan Ocean University revealed 11 active underwater volcanoes surrounding Gongliao, the nearest only 20 kilometers away. 
For the fourth plant, we've raised the safety standard. Even if there's a nuclear accident, it can be contained within. We constantly conduct many stringent tests. Our reports show that sometimes areas near the power plants have an even lower background radiation level than those of other places. Some people say radiation decays into the background over time. Yes, but it takes a very, very long time to go away. In the meantime, even a tiny amount of radioactivity could cause serious problems. One example is strontium-90. One nucleus can cause cancer and death. The sea feeds the sky. The sky feeds the earth. The earth feeds us. That's how nature works. If we disrupt its balance, it will destroy us. Many countries are going for renewable green energy. That should be our energy solution. So Taiwan's energy needs continue to grow. And while nuclear energy remains a divisive issue, some suggest renewable energy as the way forward. Taiwan imports 98% of its energy, vital for this rapidly industrializing economy. The government hopes that by 2025, the island can generate 15% of the energy needs through renewable sources. But that could come at a cost. Renewable energy, uh, the price now is uh, too high the cost too high. So if we use uh, more renewable energy, that means that uh, our electricity bill will increase. Uh, we should have a plan that uh, we, we, we will not uh, implement too much, too quickly, uh, this renewable. Today, solar and wind power accounts for less than 3% of Taiwan's electricity generation. That's even though the island boasts Asia's largest solar power plant which started operations last December. Building renewable power plants needs a lot of land area. We don't have that much land, and we have a high population density, so it's hard to build such power plants. It's difficult to see Taiwan's dependence on nuclear power diminishing. And if plans to ship nuclear waste overseas fail to materialize, it must continue to convince its own people that the benefits of nuclear energy far outweigh the risks. The long-term human costs, however, might be more than a matter of dollars and cents. <laughs>